Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you, and it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click survey. Ten minutes, Mr. Narrator. You're on in ten minutes. Thanks. Psst. Hey, Smarty Pants, is it just me or is it hot in here? Is anyone else sweating? No? Just me? Hmm. Okay. That's weird. I mean... Sure, it's hot outside, but I'm inside in an air-conditioned room wearing light, comfortable clothes. And yet, for some reason, I'm sweating a lot. Oh, and I'm also about to give a speech in front of lots of people. Hey, Eki, is that you? It's not me. That one's all you, Appy. Uh, who's that talking? Oh, sorry, narrator friend. We're your sweat glands. I'm your eccrine gland, but I go by Ecky for short. And that's Appy, otherwise known as your apocrine gland. They're the one currently making you sweat. Oh, nice to meet you both. Also, can you please make it stop? I'm about to give an important speech, and I look like I just had gym class. Um, I'd really like to, but I can't. Orders from the big guy upstairs. The big guy upstairs? You know, your brain. Oh. Ahem. I can hear you, Appy. I have ears, you know. I have eyes and limbs and a nervous system, which, I might add, controls you, sweat glands. Oh, uh, uh, hi, brain. Narrate and I were just talking about... I know what you're talking about. I know everything. I'm your brain. Of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can someone please explain why I'm sweating like I just ran 10 miles? I got this. We noticed you were worried about your speech. So your brain sent me, Apocrine, in response to your dangerous situation, whereupon I have produced the sweat. Dangerous situation? I'm reading a speech. And how is sweat helping anything? Um, brain, little help. Ah, oh, fine. I'll tell you. Wait, before you do, what do you think, smarty pants? Is there a good reason you might sweat when you're nervous? What is sweat even made of in the first place? Where does it come from and how does it help you? It's time for another whiff of science on... Who smarted? Who smarted? Smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. And who's smart? And... All right, five minutes, Mr. Narrator. You're on in five. Great. I'm on in five, and I look like I just went swimming. Ooh, I know. We can use that time to tell all the smarty pants listening why sweating is awesome. I'm not sure how awesome sweating looks. <laughs> or smells. But fine, let's talk about it. Of course, the first thing we need to know is, what is sweat? Oh, oh, can we do a multiple choice and see if anyone can guess? Oh, of course. So what do you think, smarty pants? Is sweat A, mostly water? B, water and salt. C, water and salt and a dash of other chemicals. Or D, lemonade. Well, as much as I could use a cool glass of lemonade right now, it's definitely not D. So what is it, Eki? The answer is C. While sweat is mostly made up of water, it also includes salt and a few other chemicals. Those chemicals are called electrolytes, and they help your body to function well. Ah. 
You may have heard of sports drinks claiming to replace your electrolytes when you're competing and sweating a lot. Gotcha. So now we know what sweat is made of, but what's it for? Does it have a purpose? Does it have a purpose? Wow. I am actually offended. Stay cool, Appy. That's why we're here. To teach. Yeah, I'm over it. I'll be okay. Okay, I'm glad you'll be okay. Meanwhile, I'm the one dripping sweat on my notes. Look, here's the deal. We know sweat isn't super popular amongst humans, but it actually is very good for you. Good how? Because without it, you can overheat and... (laughs) Hang on, no one's dying here. Everything's fine. Because we, your glands, are always on standby and at the ready. Did you know you and everyone listening sweat constantly? (gasps) Sometimes without you even knowing or feeling it. What? Most people sweat out up to a quart a day. Whoa. And there are different reasons why you sweat. And to Appy's point, one of the main ones is that sweat cools off your body. And those orders always come from the big guy upstairs. You mean your brain. That's right. My messaging system, in which I alert parts of your body to take action, is called your nervous system. But the fact that you sweat when you're nervous is just a coincidence. Sweating has nothing to do with feeling nervous. As your brain, I respond to things happening around and to you, whether it's your muscles generating heat from within, like from exercise or your skin heating up due to the temperature outside your body, like on a hot day. It's my job as your brain to recognize your body is getting hot and alerting these guys, your sweat glands, to activate in order to cool you down. As your trusty eccrine gland, I produce sweat primarily for temperature regulation. I see. So how does it work? First, your brain activates us glands to produce the watery, salty electrolyte solution known as sweat, or perspiration. Then, the sweat makes its way through your body through small tubes known as ducts. These ducts lead to your pores, which are teeny tiny holes in your skin. At that point, the moisture of your sweat has now moved from inside your body to the outside, where it rests on your skin. And then, a cool science change happens as the moisture makes contact with the air. Ah, smarty pants. Can you guess what cool science change happens when the liquid sweat meets the warm air around you? It starts with the letter E. Did you say evaporate? Great job if you did. Evaporation is when a liquid substance changes into a vapor or gas. Ah. In this case, the water molecules in your sweat change to a vapor that invisibly enters the air around you. So with sweating, it's not the sweat on your skin that cools you. It's the evaporation happening around you that offers you a cooling sensation. See? I told you sweating is awesome. And helpful. Okay, that makes sense. But why am I sweating so much now? I'm not hot or doing exercise. To answer that, let's play a little game. Pretend it's 12 o'clock noon on a hot summer day. A bunch of kids are running and playing, while some grown-ups are mowing their lawns and gardening. Who do you think will be sweating more, the kids or the grown-ups? Ooh, that's a toughie. Think about it for a minute, Smarty Pants. We'll be back with the answer right after this quick message. Hey, Smarties, trusty narrator here. I had a unique challenge recently. I needed to learn German for a friend's wedding in just a few weeks. That's when I found Babbel. Thanks to Babbel, I'm well on my way to holding my own in German conversations and just in time for the wedding. Babbel makes learning a new language engaging and practical. It's not just about words, it's about real conversations that you can actually use. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash smarted. 
Get 55% off at babbel.com slash smarted. It's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash smarted. Rules and restrictions may apply. Join me on this language learning journey with Babbel. Auf Wiedersehen, and let's embrace new conversations together. Hello, smarty listeners. Trusty here, home after a long day of smarting, and boy, am I hungry. The question is, what to cook? Do I make crispy chicken parmesan? Or yummy salsa verde enchiladas? Or mouth-watering chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese? Now, I know what you're thinking. Trusty, how can you possibly cook such amazing, delicious, restaurant-worthy meals after a long day? It's easy. Just say hello to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit, and it is literally the best thing ever. Each week, I choose from over 45 scrumptious chef-crafted recipes online. Then, when my box arrives, I have everything I need for easy-to-make, hearty, healthy, delicious meals that I just know you and your family will love. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, HelloFresh wants to give you free breakfast for life. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree and use code SmartedFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash SmartedFree with code SmartedFree. Now back to Who Smarted. So what do you think? On a hot day outside, who will be sweating more? The playing kids or the hard at work grown-ups? Hmm. Do you have your answer, Smarty Pants? Eki? If you said the grown-ups would be sweating more, you're right. Which means kids are better at regulating their temperature than adults. Whoa. It's true. When there's too much fluid hitting the surface of your skin, the sweat drips. If it's dripping, it's not evaporating. And as we've just learned, it's the evaporation, not the sweat itself, that cools us down. Ah. Kids sweat way less than adults, and their sweat evaporates efficiently. Ah. While adults can sometimes sweat so much that instead of feeling cooler... They just feel hot and soaked. Oh, case in point. Me, right now. Plus, since kids are sweating less, they're hanging on to the water in their bodies. And that water can do its many important jobs. Okay, I get it. The kids win. Okay, smarty pants. I want you to think of some activities that tell your brain it's time to sweat. Shout them out. I heard running, softball, soccer, basketball, being out on a hot day. Yep, those are all good answers. But can you think of any times that you sweat that don't have to do with warm weather or physical activity? Oh, I can, I can. How about you, smarty pants? Did you say a fever? Good job. When your body is fighting off an infection, your body temperature rises. We call that a fever. Ah. And when your fever is ending, we say your fever is breaking. The sweat that follows a fever happens because your brain has decided it's time to cool down. But again, that's a physical response. What about sweat that occurs when you're going through something emotional? Like my hands and the rest of me sweating before my big speech. That's what I was going to say. But then I got worried I might be wrong. Ah, but that's just it. Feeling worried is one of the emotional responses that can cause sweating. And I bet you, Appy, are just the person to explain why. I am? I I mean, yeah, of course I am. That's because it's your apocrine glands that causes you to sweat for emotional reasons. Ah. But why? It has to do with something known as your fight-or-flight responses. Huh? See, a long time ago, early humans faced life-or-death threats on a regular basis. Everything from lions and bears to enemy tribes. Their bodies reacted in ways, including sweating, that could help them either fight the threat or take flight. 
also known as running away. I understand why a bear or a lion would make me sweat, but what's so threatening about giving a speech? That's just it. Your brain's funny that way. Hey. Sorry, big guy, but it's true. Brains don't take the time to distinguish between giving a speech or a grizzly bear. If you suddenly notice that you're vulnerable to an animal attacking or some snickering from the audience, your brain takes action. I'm just trying to help. And while that emotional sweat may not have any practical use, think of it as your ancient instincts preparing you to be ready for anything. Amazing. One last question. Why does sweat smell so bad? <clears throat> okay, let's get one thing straight. Sweat does not stink. What? I know. I know everybody thinks sweat is stinky, but it ain't us. <laughs> Am I right, Eki? Abby's right. Sweat itself is odorless. But, Abby, you gotta admit, your sweat does come out in stinky spaces in some pretty gross places. It's true. Your armpits and groin area carry more bacteria than other places on your body. And that just so happens to be where us apocrine glands are located. Ah, so it's not the sweat that smells. It's your body parts becoming... moistened. Mr. Narrator, it's time. Okay, I'm on. Bye, Appy. Bye, Eki. Bye, Brain. You got this. Good luck. Sorry for making you all wet. Ah, don't sweat it. A big shout out to superfan Fiona in Sagamore Hills, Ohio. We're so glad you love the show, Fiona. This episode, Sweat, was written by Jenna Hoban and voiced by Kim Davis, Jenna Hoban, Sheffield Chastain, Brandon Bayless, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production. Hey there, Smarty fans, especially parents and educators. We've got something special for you. And it's not just another exciting episode of Who Smarted. It's a chance for you to help shape the future of our show. We're on a mission to make Who Smarted even better for both our brilliant young listeners and their amazing parents and educators. That's why we're inviting you to participate in our exclusive first ever Who Smarted survey to let us know what's working and where we can improve. So, parents and educators, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, cozy up, and take a few minutes to fill out our survey. Head over to whosmarted.com and click Survey. Together, let's make Who Smarted the best it can be. Thanks for being an awesome part of our smarting community. And remember, the survey is at whosmarted.com. Just click Survey.